Diego, rainy San Diego today. Had like a little, little cold front come through, so little rainy here. I'm riding around on Finch. And um, today I wanted to talk a little bit about using physical barriers in the training. Now I'll describe a little bit more about what I mean by that. Um, when training horses, I'm always trying to find the best way to set things up uh, that my horses can find an answer um, in the easiest way possible. So if there's a way that I can set up a problem in the training that the horses find the, the correct answer, or the answer that I want them to find in the easiest way possible, I'm going to do that. Um, there's a difference between supporting your horse in a negative way where you're physically manipulating them or assisting them to do something versus training them. Um, in the training, I want them to do it on their own, but I want to do everything I can to help them find the answer. It's a tricky balance trying to figure out how to describe this, but um, I'll go ahead and talk about my, my examples here. And then um, Elaine from Davis, California. Hi, Elaine. I think I said that right. It kind of pops up on my screen when people comment and then it disappears. So I like barely get a glimpse at it. Um, but yeah, um, so, okay. So here on Finch, I want to talk, Finch is pretty trained, um, but I want to talk about some of the, I want to talk, Finch is pretty trained, um, but I want to talk about some of the basics and then I can uh, kind of show you. So I'm, I'm pointing here at the mirror so you guys can see. And then there's this little hedge here barrier um, and one thing that I do when I'm on the horses and I'm training the horses specifically the young horses and I when I start teaching them to yield sideways off the leg uh, when I teach them sideways off the leg in a various various different ways whether it's just to move the haunches or um, or to move sideways off the leg there's a few things. So naturally, the horses have an, an inclination to just go forward. If you put leg aid on, whether it's left leg, right leg, leg in general, most horses' natural inclination is to go forward. Um, and, and what that causes is then if you're trying to teach them a leg yield or a side pass or move the haunches over, it causes a problem because you put your leg on, they go forward, then you have to pull on the reins to slow them down um, and so then they fight against the contact, so it causes a problem. So when you start with your young horses, one thing, one tip that I have to start with, and sometimes the older horses, it's good to go back to this, is point them at a physical barrier. Um, so here I'm pointed at the rail. This is the mirror, so you guys can see. But um, point them at the rail. And now you can see my legs here. Um, I'll sit up kind of square here. Okay, so now I'm going to use my right leg. That's this leg over here. And um, I'm going to start with that right leg. So I'm going to start. You can feel him already. He's so sensitive. This horse, so fun. Finchy. I'm going to start with my right leg. Little pressure. Little pressure. Keep the head pointed at the physical barrier until they move over like that. And then quit. Um, now, obviously, when, when you have an uneducated horse or a green horse, they're not going to know to move sideways. So they may push into your leg, they may go backwards, they may go forward. And it's a good scenario that you can just keep them pointed there so that they don't run forward. And you can just come with a leg. So now I'm kind of sideways here to my barrier. Hi, Finchy. Finchy's like, what are we doing? I, I understand all of this. Um, and then I can come with my left leg. I'm going to keep him pointed at the barrier. So I'm going to say, bend a little bit to the left. Come with my left leg. You can barely see it. He's so sensitive. But I'm saying my left leg is moving. My left leg is moving. Keep looking there until the left hind leg reaches under the body. Do you guys see that? Then I quit. So... That's an important thing to teach the horses. And I started doing this honestly on my young horses. So like 
I think dressage, sometimes we get stuck. Like we think, okay, we have a young horse. We're just going to ride 20 meter circles, go around in circles and then be done. And part of the thing that I like from the natural horsemanship world is they get into educating mode a lot faster. Um, so if you have 10 rides on a horse, the natural horsemanship community goes to educating the horses. And I think we should be doing the same. And, and what that means is really slowing things down, that you're not walking forward, you're not trying to ride a leg yield, a trot leg yield. You're just trying to explain to the horse, when I am pointed here at a halt, can I use my right leg, right leg, and get that right hind leg to go over under the body? Right leg, right leg, good. But anyway, like I said, pointing him at the barrier means that he knows they understand the physical barriers very well. Like, obviously, this one isn't very high, but if you're in an indoor, you can point them straight at the wall in the indoor. Then they're going to understand that. They're going to say, well, there's a giant wall here. I can't run forward. So it closes off that opportunity. Um, it closes the door so that they can find the door that you want them to understand. And eventually, you want to be able to close that door with your connection. But before you're able to do that, you may have to simplify things. So the more with the horses you can break things down, slow down, ex be in explaining mode, uh, the better you can help them. And then you want to start with a small aid and explain to the horses how to respond to the small aids. Uh, the evolution of this, using the physical barriers in the training, is um, I do with my young horses and even with my older horses, I will do a lot of leg yields on the rail. Uh, let me explain. So here's my hedge at the end of the arena. The walker is actually through there. I don't know if you guys can see, but um, this wall is a little higher, obviously, and, and not a mirror. So. Um, if I'm going to ride a leg yield, like down this rail and use the hedge, if I flex him into the rail, he's going to run his head into the plants if I'm close. So if I want to ride a leg yield down the rail, I want to bend the head into the rail and tell he almost, hey, don't eat the hedge, <laughs> Finchy. Bend the head into the rail and then the haunches are going to move over. Now, then I can, I can really work on this direction, my right leg, my right leg to my left rein, okay? Those diagonal aids. And use the wall, as I flex him into the wall, the haunches are gonna move over. So then I can work it to where he understands to move sideways. I don't know if that's making sense, but um, I'm kind of using the wall and the hedge as a physical barrier to teach the leg yield. Instead of riding my leg yield just across the arena here with no support, I'm riding it here. I'm saying, if I just point your head toward the rail, I come a little bit with my right leg. Oh, right leg, right leg. Oh, then the haunches steps over, the shoulder stays on the rail, and then I can get him to yield sideways. So if you look down there in the mirror, wait till you guys get a little closer. You can see that the haunches are stepping in, the shoulders are stepping toward the rail, and he's doing a leg yield down the rail. Now it's a leg yield because he's, uh, because he's like exercises that are dynamic, okay? I don't want you to think, Joe said do this exercise, um, my favorite exercises are dynamic. That means adjustable to the horse. So uh, if they're stuck against the right leg, you can flex them more into the wall to get the hind leg to move over. Uh, if they're stuck against the left rein, you can turn it into travers. Travers is haunches in. So you can say, move the haunches over, then flex him left, bend him left, and then you end up in travers. Wait, I'll show you that again. So. If I'm going to make it travers, I'm going to bend him left, right? Like that. If I'm going to be your leg yield, I'm going to be pretty straight. And then if I'm going to make it even easier, I'm going to bend him a little bit to the right. But I want to be able to get my angle and then go leg yield, travers, leg yield, travers. Um, 
That's the same thing as a great staple exercise, which is shoulder in to Ron Ver, shoulder in to Ron Ver. It's just positioned differently. So why is that a good exercise? Why is shoulder in a good exercise? Shoulder in, inside leg to outside rein, but then you check on your outside rein. You say, if I take my outside rein, can I turn you in to Ron Ver? Shoulder in to Ron Ver. So now he's bending right. Bending right, the haunches step in. Bending right, Ron Ver. Back to shoulder in. So I'm bending a little bit left. Off the left leg, off the left leg. Now I change the flexion to Ron Ver. Off the left leg, off the left leg. So that, that exercise has a lot less support from, um, from the rail. So as I put it against the rail and I do leg yield or even bending left, I'm working on the opposite diagonal aids. Uh, I'm working on, if I'm going to the right now, I'm working on left leg to right rein. So first I'm going down the rail, I'm gonna say left leg to right rein left leg to right rein with a little bit of left bend. Then I'm going to change it in to travers or haunches in. And then I'm still working left leg to right rein, left leg to right rein. So although they're positioned differently in the arena, this one has a little bit more support from the rail because if I bend him into the rail, he's going to move those haunches over. So I'm trying to find how to use the physical barriers to assist in my training. Um, another one that I really, really like is when we start teaching the haunches in, um, we can use the, the coming to the rail as a setup to start with my travers. As the rain picks up here, guys, it is raining pretty good here, as you can see. Um, <laughs> uh, rainy San Diego. We got 21 people on here. Okay, let's see. So I'm going to come to the rail here. I'm going to come. Let's back up a little bit so you guys can see. I'm going to come into the rail at S. Okay, so I'm kind of on a diagonal line towards S. Now, what I want to do is I want to ride my haunches in. If I'm going to teach him haunches in, hi, Finchy. I'm going to teach him haunches in. I want inside leg to really support at the girth. So, and if I ride my shoulders into the rail and inside bending, don't chew on my curb rein, you stinker. He loves to chew on my curb rein. He's still a baby like that. Um, okay, so I'm going to move, I'm going to really work the inside leg, right? Because I want to establish inside bending from my inside leg. So I'm going to ride him to the rail. I'm going to position right bending and I'm going to ride the shoulders to the rail, shoulders to the rail. And then I'm going to end up in haunches in. So look down there in the mirror, end up in haunches in, but I'm really supporting from the inside leg. And then when I get to the rail, he's going to naturally want to put the haunches in. So that's a great opportunity to position the haunches. Again, I'm going to ride straight towards C, straight towards C. Right leg uses moves the shoulders over a little bit. Then I support with the outside leg. The haunches come in. Haunches are in. Outside leg a little bit back. Good. That's another one using the physical uh, barrier to help. And I can do that both in the canter pirouettes. Super helpful. You're trying to ride the canter pirouette, right? You're, you're wanting to position the haunches. They're having trouble with it. Position the haunches, position the haunches. Outside leg, inside leg supports at the girth. Then he ends up with the haunches in, in travers, okay? And so think about, this is your sandbox. This is your training sandbox. How do I use it to support the idea of the horse, the natural inclination of the horse? Uh, get with your horse so that your horse can get with you. Uh, instead of just coming up with your own ideas and fighting your own way, you have to find a way of like, if I just ride on a loose rein toward the bad connection, watch these viewers eyes now. Oh, 16, 15. Whenever I get bad connection, you guys disappear. 
my followers disappear. That's why I need to change. Don't you guys want to witness me in a rainstorm? And Finchy? Poor Finchy. After riding the rain, suffering out here in Southern California. All right, guys, look at these oranges. I ate one of these oranges the other day. We have oranges at A. Oh my goodness, they're so good. They're not even oranges. They're like little clementines, which are like way better. Ooh, 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 so good. All right, my phone is totally soaked. I mean, my whole everything is totally soaked, but let me wipe it with this. Let's see. Good morning from Davis. Good morning. Karen made it to one of my live chats. Yeah, lots of people have been seeing them, but um, let's see. Um, let's see. Barbara from the UK. Love Finch. Everybody loves Finchy. Everybody loves Finchy. <laughs> Um, I love this tip. Makes so much sense to the horse. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. Um, from Finland, how old is your horse? He is seven this year, Rena. Joseph Perry, great name. Um, oh, my God, the rain. Yeah, Chelsea, it is raining out here. San Antonio, Texas. Uh, South Africa. Ooh. I heard there's a decent dressage community in South Africa. If anybody wants to organize a clinic for me in South Africa, please, 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 I'm begging you. I would love to come to South Africa, give you a good deal on a clinic. Um, yeah, Finchie's doing good. Ooh, Karen from Maryland. I teach my thoroughbreds to be relaxed facing the wall and hand first. Otherwise, get super hot under saddle, making them yield the headquarters. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like a tool using physical barriers, using um, getting with your horse. Raining in the UK too. Yeah, it's always raining there. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> but it's kind of nice for a change. Have a little cold day. Um, uh, let's see. What else, guys? Horses have been going really good. Finch is going really good. I'll talk about Finch a little bit. I struggled for a, a while with the changes. He's seven now. His six-year-old deer, they were, he's such a trier, right? He wants to try so hard. But then it, it's hard to settle the changes where it happens where he's not, um, not too reactive, too hot to it. It's like he wanted to do it too much. You know, if he was a little bit more dull, I had to push him around more and I could really put my leg on him, um, the changes would be easier. I had to spend so much time getting him to like slow down, not overthink it, relax a little bit before they got better. Um, so the six year old deer, the changes were tricky for him, especially the right to left. The right canter is a little bit trickier on him. Um, and then to get him really through in that canter is tricky. So the changes took me a while and now they're starting to settle in. I really worked on getting him bending, like riding my canter leg yields, getting him uh, like Carl does. I was inspired by those videos, getting like off the outside leg to the inside rein. Um, and then he started getting a lot better. Um, there he's now like i'm doing the threes and the fours and the half passes and really kind of all the stuff from the saint george so uh i'm i'm kind of trying to figure out what to enter him and there's a show coming up in like three weeks i think yeah three weeks I'm trying to figure out what to enter him in i'll take him i'll take guapo i'll take mozart i think i might take cinco um, we'll see. I have to, I have to talk to Rochelle today. That's who owns Mozart and Cinco. And then, uh, make a plan. Guapo's going really well. That's the licensed stallion influencer. He's doing all the five-year-old stuff. Him too. I started teaching him the leg yields in the canner. I like teaching the leg yields in the canner because that gets you more support for the counter canner. There's no leg yields in canner. Um, but sometimes 
if you educate the horses, then it makes the other stuff easier. So instead of just working on counter canner, really started teaching him like trave little baby traver and canner. Um, and not even that I'm just like riding traver down the long side, but just that I can like put my outside leg back, position the traver, take the outside leg forward and take it out. So that's another huge, huge thing with the training is school of feeling. And one thing that I'm really fond of is not trying to hold things. So it's more important how the horses react, that you can get them to position the haunches, you can get them to bend, you can get them to yield, but don't try to hold it. Just put it, put it there and then let go. Put it there and then let go. So they get where poor connection. I think I should go to work before it starts pouring. Or well, I guess it's already kind of pouring. And uh, this isn't called pouring. If it was a downpour, you wouldn't even be able to see my face. Um, Finchie! Should I at least do like one lap? Canner? For sure. Victory lap for the remaining 10 people that are here because my connection starts cutting off and it gets super boring when it's cutting off. All right, Vinci. Victory lap. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you guys must think I'm crazy. One thing that is helpful is um, if you let go, if you ride, if you let go. Yeah, they may be a bit like Finch is above the bit, but that's okay. Like, we're sometimes too paranoid about horses being above the bit in dressage. Um, let them be there, let them find the balance. More jumper about that. If you're in self carriage, it's not bad for a horse to be above. That's defiance of the eights, that's bad. But here, I'm not pulling against them. I'm not asking him to be on the bit. So therefore, him being above the bit is fine. I have no connection. Um, the advantage in riding this way is then I'm in self-carriage. Then I have the opportunity to establish a communication that is totally independent. Uh, the hand from the seat. Okay. And cantering. Oh, Finji. Such a good horse. Go, Finchy, go. Go, Finchy, go. Get my camera switched around so I can look at you guys. Go for a little gallop in the rain. Um, I hope my phone works after that. Soaked. Also, like using my voice in the training. <laughs> Look at him. Finchy. <laughs> Look at him. Finchy. Okay. All right, guys, that's enough for a day.